course, things have to change because of COVID. And they've added a, another ceremony where there will be a live reading of the names, the original and uh, first ceremony that we had seen here from the 9-11 memorial will be a pre-recorded reading of the names. And while we talk about the family members who survived, those who were lost, we also have to talk about the incredible first responders that lost their lives on the day of September 11th and have continued to lose their lives afterwards because of their service down here during 9-11. And to speak to that this morning, I have Police Commissioner Dermot Shea with me. Thank you so much, Commissioner, for being with us this morning. We really appreciate you being here. And of course, our condolences to you and your department for the members lost then and the members you continue to lose. Uh, thank you so much. And that's, you know, there's a lot of emotion that comes with this day. It's hard to believe it's been 19 years, but that's what we constantly, that's the rock that we keep coming back to and, and remembering the fallen and just honoring their sacrifice. There are so many things that members in your department face on a daily basis. On September 11th, it was the absolute unthinkable, a terror attack of this magnitude on the city. How do you continue to get these officers ready for whatever may come their way while still dealing with the mundane things that happen day in and day out here in the life of New York City? Yeah, and the word mundane in New York City is usually not used in the same sentence, but that's what that's our job. And we have, I like to think, the most professional police department in the world, tremendous uh, executive staff, and, and the work that's done on the ground, as you know, with the men and women of the police department, uniform and civilian, it, it's more pointing them in the right direction, leading them, but uh, they're New Yorkers. They love this city. They love serving the people of this city. So of all the things that I worry about, that's probably the easiest part of my job. The in the wake of 9-11, we saw many people leave the city. We yeah. saw a, a, a depression take over our city. It was a very difficult time, and we had to rebuild. We're having to do that today in the loss of 23,000 lives to COVID. Yeah. How do you reassure New Yorkers kind of taking a page from history and how we came back and what we're going to be facing in our future here? No, that's a great question, Kirsten. And when you look at this building and what came out of this site. I remember uh, September 11th and that week looking at this site and just shaking my head. It was uncomprehensible what was gonna come next. And when you look at where we are now and the vibrancy of this particular neighborhood and this city, it's been a tough year. And there are parallels, they're very different situations, but I think it shows you the resiliency of New Yorkers. And, and, and I think it shows you that there is nothing that we can't overcome. Uh, that's what I believe at my core. I also believe that the men and women of this police department would never let this city go backwards. So we're going to be a part of getting out of this. We're in a tough time now financially. We're certainly in the middle of COVID still. We, we still have people getting sick from COVID. Sure. You know, uh, uh, I think we're in a much better place. Obviously, and treatments are uh, more information is coming online. But, you know, it, it's a tough time. But you're seeing steps of positive, too, whether it's schools, whether it's indoor dining, whether it's traffic, when did we say we we welcome traffic? But you're starting to see and traffic here it build is back up again. So we are we are going to get back. Uh, the men and women of this police department are going to be a huge part of that. And, we, and I we, think it's exciting we, times ahead. We we thank you and your members for all of that. And just very briefly, I I don't want to forget terror. So many yeah. other headlines have taken over. We only have a few seconds left. Should we forget about that? Do you, is that something that you put on the back burner? No, absolutely not. And uh, when you think of the 23 members that we lost, and thank you for mentioning the hundreds that have passed since and the thousands that are still sick. We don't need any more reminder than that. Um, terrorism has never been removed from our thought. I can tell you that whether it's myself, uh, Commissioner John Miller, Chief Martin Matarazzo, who heads up our Counterterrorism Bureau, um, this is something that we talk about every single week. There is not a week that goes by that we don't talk about it. There's not a day that goes by that we don't deploy police officers throughout New York City, seen and unseen, working with our federal partners in the JTTF and the FBI to make sure that New York remains as safe as possible. And we thank you for that, Commissioner, and thank all your members of the service for everything they do for New Yorkers each and every day. Commissioner Dermot Shea, thank you so thank much you for being so much, here Kirsten. this morning. And Dan and Betty, we will continue to follow the developments as these memorial services 
roll out over the course of the morning. Reporting live from Lower Manhattan, I'm Kirsten Cole, PIX 11 News. Back to you. Kirsten, thank you for that interview. Thank you to the police commissioner and the NYPD for their time this morning and what they do every single day to keep New York safe. It is a day like today that is a big reminder of what they do on a daily basis.